my friends, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is that Ethel Flight is still great in 2020. The bad news? Well, that's something we've got to talk about in this video, where we're going to give you a full set of talent, optimal pairings, and more. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be giving you a full commander guide on Ethel Flight and focus in on her relevance in 2020 and moving forward in this game because although she is a free-to-play legendary, everybody's figured out that she's good and that is a problem. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos to join almost 80,000 other people who are subscribed to the channel already. We're a sponsored content creator and this has been one of the legendaries I've talked about the most along with Esong and others. In this commander guide, we're gonna talk about Ethelflaed's relevance in 2020, which has absolutely changed and shifted since the last time that we made a video about this commander. We're then gonna give a quick review of the skills and that will inform us for the very best talent builds that you can use on this commander. In addition, we're gonna give you some of our best pairings and a lot of these you probably would not have expected. Let's start with the good news and then make our way to the bad news. The good news is that Ethel Flight is still a phenomenal commander. She does area of effect damage. She is a staple, absolute critical commander in Lost Canyon. Literally every top player is still using this commander right over here and she's free to play people, which is insane. Her area of effect is massive. It does a huge 180 degree arc. I mean, there's a lot to like about this commander, even though she's got some drawbacks, such as needing to have a slow applied to a bunch of enemies in order to do extra damage. It doesn't matter. That's not the problem. Let's talk about what the problem is with Ethel Fled in 2020. And to do this, I'm going to use a metaphor, okay? You ever play a Where's Waldo game? You know what I'm talking about, where you had to find that dude with like the stripy clothing and red and white? Let me show you a picture, okay? Let me show you a picture of what this looks like, real humans playing Where's Waldo. Somewhere in this picture, there is someone wearing red and white clothing. See if you can spot them, and I promise you this is relevant, because here's the thing. When you bring a march to the open field, and it's not a very attractive target, you blend in to the big, crazy fight that's happening. But when you bring an Ethelflaed, it looks kind of like this. Not a very tricky Where's Waldo diagram, and really, for most people that are hunting for kills, you look more like this. It's not exactly a great situation to be Ethelflaed in 2020 in a big open field fight. Okay, so why is that relevant? Because look, you cannot use your Ethelflaed as a primary in the same way that you used to be able to run around with a commander of this caliber in Season 1 or Season 2 or even Season 3 of Kingdom vs. Kingdom. And yes, perhaps in the open field, if you're fighting with a lot of other people, you might be able, in the craziness of the fight, be able to hide your Ethelflaed, but I don't think so. People are going to focus her down, which means you need to pair her differently than you have in the past to hide the fact that you brought her. Otherwise, you will get your march focused down and deleted, which really sucks, especially in the Altar of Darkness and Ancient Ruins. That's the biggest change for Ethel Vled in 2020, is that everybody's figured out how crazy good she is. Let's review the skills on this commander so that we are very well grounded in how they work before we go and get a look at the talents. The first skill does a damage factor of 800 hitting up to five targets in a 180 degree arc, which is nuts. It's like half a circle and it reduces the attack, defense, and health by 30%. It's possibly the single most effective debuff in the game and it hits five targets. Crazy. If you were to hit five targets, by the way, that is a ridiculous amount of damage to be doing. That's 4,000 total damage factor. And okay, realistically, you're more likely to hit one, two, three in a game mode like Canyon. But even if you're hitting three targets, that's still 2,400 damage factor total with a crazy debuff. Yeah, this is all around fantastic. The next skill, however, is remarkably unimpressive. It reduces the counterattack damage that you take which, by the way, is kind of an interesting thing for counter rallies, which we're going to talk about later. Counter rallies are only taking the counter attack damage from the target, not the normal attack damage. 
And this is also relevant in a multi-rally, in a situation where this is the second rally, the only thing they're taking is counterattack damage, unless the target has area of effect damage, then I guess they might also get hit. Also, there's some new commanders in the game, like Wu Zetian, that do some skill damage back to all targets hitting them, but you get the general idea. Counterattack damage reduction is good when you're hitting lots of targets that are not hitting you back. In addition, you have a 10% chance to reduce the march speed of enemy cavalry units, which is remarkably specific, by the way, by 50%, and all other troops by 30%. That slow effect lasts for three seconds. That is a very powerful ability in the open field. The next skill is for battling barbarians. I mean, yeah, she's a peacekeeper. 35% extra damage and 35% extra experience is really quite solid. The next skill makes it so that when you're leading a rally, you can bring more troops. 10% more troops might not sound like a big deal, but it's absolutely game-changing. I mean, it is a very big deal to be attacking a flag with a, a max cap of 1.65 million when the enemy can only have 1.5 million in the flag. It's honestly very, very powerful as an effect for taking out things like flags, forts, holy sites, and so on. In addition, when you bring three different types of troops, you get a 20% damage bonus. So this means that even if you're fighting in Canyon and you're bringing mostly infantry, because that's what most people do with this commander, you still wanna have a small amount of two other types of troops so that you get the full benefit of this. And no, bringing multiple tiers of the same type of troop does not count. In other words, it does not count as different troop types to have some T4 cavalry and some T5 cavalry. Now the expertise skill makes it so that you do 20% extra more damage when the target is slowed. And yes, you've got a way to slow a target. However, you need some more ways to slow targets and the good news is you've got a way to do that. That is going to be available to you in the talents, which we should go talk about now. The talents for this commander include the leadership, peacekeeping, and support trees, which are pretty solid overall. In particular, I would argue that support is one of the strongest trees in the game. Getting a look at those talents now, we can see here we've got a build for Ethelfled for battling in game modes like Canyon. This is what we personally use. You also could use this in the open field. However, it is lacking in march speed and that is important to call to your attention. Now, one thing I've done here to save on talent points is I put only one point in Cage of Thorns. This is an area of effect slow, hitting up to five marches. By the way, not a coincidence that Ethel Flood's active skill hits up to five marches. So a part of what you're trying to do is to slow down these marches with Cage of Thorns, and then hit them with some of your area of effect damage. That is a thing that you can have happen in Canyon, even if Ethelflaed is the primary commander. When the secondary commander uses an active skill, this fires off, and you're typically generating so much rage from having a Joan of Arc nearby in that game mode that this slow effect will still be applied when Ethelflaed is doing her big AoE damage. Now, if you were going to go and make this build for yourself, and you're doing so incrementally, Start by getting Rejuvenate, then go and get Hidden Wrath, which is going to generate even more rage, especially when you get surrounded. From there, I would make my way up to Strategic Prowess or also Emergency Protection. Either way is fine, and as you're making your way toward expertising them, be sure to drop that one point in the Cage of Thorns, because you are going to use mixed troops with this commander. Get armed to the teeth, get armored to the teeth, don't miss out on the one point of march speed, and I suppose if you're pairing with a commander that does healing, these three points over heal in Steely Soul are a little bit flexible. You could go for the counterattack bonus instead if you had a commander pairing that had healing. The next build that I want to show you has a good bit more march speed. This is something you could use to battle barbarians and level up this commander while also using her to fight other players as well. If you're using her for that combination of activities, you of course have to start by getting insight to reduce your action point cost for battling barbarians. From there, you need to get rejuvenate to generate lots of rage. Then I would go and get thoroughbreds, pick up hidden wrath so that you get some extra rage generation, go and grab the one point in cage of thorns, and the last thing you'll make your way up to is strategic prowess. The main difference between these builds is that you're getting a boatload of march speed 
This does come at a rather steep cost, however. You are losing out on the 3% extra troops from fresh recruits, which is one of my favorite talent points to go and get. This next build is for counter rallying. And let me say that I don't think this commander is particularly good to use for counter rallies, unless you're in the very early game in Rise of Kingdoms. We're talking like the first season of KVK, maybe. By the time the second and third seasons of KVK have come around, I'd like to think you've got better options than Ethelfled, and typically bringing a dedicated troop type will be a better counter rally choice. I do, however, like having the extra troops in the counter rally because, man, it's really hard to swarm a counter rally with a ridiculous amount of troops. All of that said, here's the build I would use. Start by getting Rejuvenate, then get Hidden Wrath, then get Loose Formation, then go and get Strategic Prowess. From there, make your way up to Name of the King, and last but not least, get Armed to the Teeth and Armored to the Teeth. They are solid value. This next build is for sustained open field barbarian fighting. If you're going to be out in the field battling barbarians for a very long time, this build right here is freaking fantastic. This is going to give you a huge amount of sustain and curing chant. You get a lot of march speed along the way, which is very nice. You get the trophy hunter talents so that you get extra resource packs as you go. And who doesn't want those extra resources? You've got the rage from rejuvenate, from hidden wrath, extra troops from fresh recruits, and even a cool 6% march speed from the leadership tree. If I was using Ethelfled as a primary for battling barbarians, this is the build I would be using. Go incrementally, get Insight first, then get Rejuvenate, then you've got a lot of choices. I probably would make my way up to Max Curing Chant, get the March Speed all the way up in the right-hand side of the Leadership Tree, and the last talents I would pick up are the Fresh Recruits. If you're going to be rallying Barbarian Forts, this is a build that you could go and use. I've removed the Curing Chant talent points and dropped Trophy Hunter from the previous build in order to pick up Mighty Force, which is going to let you deal a good bit more damage to the forts that you're rallying. In addition, we have gone into the leadership and support trees for some pretty standard talents. Assuming that you're not able to completely fill your rallies, I think that Fresh Recruits is an okay pick. If you know you're going to have a mixed march, you could go and get Armed to the Teeth, which I think would be pretty solid. We did go all the way to the top of this uh, tree to get Thoroughbreds, however, because we wanted the extra march speed. The reality is that if you're rallying a lot of Barbarian Forts, you are going to want the extra march speed to get to and from those forts because, look, time is money, people. Time is money, or resources in this case. So yeah, the march speed I thought was a pretty legit Pick up. Now that we've talked about the talents, let's talk about how you unlock this commander, because this is an unusual one. Ethelfled is going to be available to you in the campaign, in the expedition specifically. Uh, you're going to get her sculptures from the metal store right over here. In addition, you're going to be getting her medals from boxes uh, that you get periodically, well, once every day. Bada boom, those are off to the side on the special mission rewards where you rally a city and you defend your city. These give treasures of the warrior queen. Opening these gives a small amount of ethyl fled sculptures, potentially. There's also a chance that you get garbage, and yeah, you know, sometimes that happens. It is what it is. Eventually, you'll have more ethyl fled sculptures than you know what to do with. So you'll have to decide at some point if you're better off continuing to spend the 1,500 currency per head, or once you're close enough to expertising her, if you'll just wait it out and get them from the treasures of the warrior queen. Either way, this is a commander you'll want to work on pretty darn quickly in this game because she's so good at so many activities in the game for so long. Getting a look now at the order in which I would work on her skills, this is a really tricky one. You always want to max the first skill on a combat-oriented legendary, so do max this skill before you start leveling her up. But from there, you are going to want to use her to battle barbarians, and you are going to level her up a lot, and you're going to want to get her to level 60 anyways, no matter what. So I would not let any of these skills and maxing any of these stop you from leveling up this commander. I suppose in a perfect world, 
you might max the first two skills and then level her up to four stars. But honestly, most players benefit from the Barbarian experience and damage, and many players might actually prefer the Barbarian experience and damage to the more combat-oriented skills that you might otherwise get on this commander. Either way, you are going to expertise her, and every single player in the game can do that. So I'm less worried about the skill order on this commander because all mistakes in skill order are fixed by expertising them when you unlock every skill anyways. So I think that if you max the first skill, you don't have to worry at this point about starring her up further. You will expertise her. It's only a matter of time, so don't sweat it. Okay, my friends, now the part you and I have been waiting for, the pairings. Ah, there's so much to talk about with this. First and foremost, let's just talk for a minute about open field versus canyon. If you are in a game mode like Sunset Canyon, use her as the primary, you don't have to hide her, and everybody uses her as a primary, this is a fine choice. The support tree is amazing, so take advantage of that. In a game mode like Canyon, there are a few truly exceptional pairings, and I wanna call attention to all of these. The first pairing I wanna talk about is going to be Ethelflaed with Esong. This is a classic pair, bring mostly archers, do ridiculous amounts of area of effect damage, Put them in the back lane if that's what you're going to do, and I think you'll do really well. One thing that I found myself doing is using the Ethelflaed and Constantine combo in the front row. I use the Ethelflaed as the primary because I haven't leveled up my Constantine, which will be the case for a lot of players in this game. And if that is you, then bring full infantry, and this is a fine choice. You can save your gold stars. The Constantine pairing is truly transformative for your canyon team. He's going to do a 10% damage reduction, and Athelflaed powers that out, which is huge, taking 10% less damage to your whole team. Another very popular and unexpected canyon pair is going to be Athelflaed primary with Alexander the Great secondary. This allows you to machine gun out the active skill of Alexander the Great, the support tree doesn't care about skill damage, and Alexander the Great isn't really doing skill damage. So not only are you machine gunning out Alexander the Great's shields, but if you have his expertise, you get his debuff applied to their canyon team as well, which is incredibly solid value. P.S. One more pairing that I really like for using in canyon is going to be the Ethelflaed primary, Hannibal Barca secondary. The only downside of this is that this is kind of the only use for Hannibal Barca in the late game, and a lot of people have moved away from that already. So my strong recommendation to you is probably not to invest in Hannibal Barca at all, but if you have him and he's expertise, using him as a secondary to the Ethelflaed to make his active skill go off more frequently is going to be super effective. Now at the epic tier in Canyon, there are some really solid pairings. You could use a Sun Tzu, which will do incredibly well, bringing a huge amount of area of effect damage and reducing the damage you take, but they're not really a frontline combo. That's more of a backline combo. In addition, you could really pair with any of these commanders that's doing area of effect damage or tankiness. I like Kusunoki for area of effect damage. Uh, it's like a cheaper version of an E-Song in the early game. I also really like the CPO pairing for tankiness if you wanted to have a frontline march, and I personally have used this and probably am right now in my restart project. Card up in the top if you want to see when I went and created a brand new account and have now leveled it up to, I think it's like 300 days old. Um, continuing on with the other pairings, a classic pair in Canyon and other game modes is a Joan of Arc. I would make the argument, however, that if you're considering pairing these commanders, you might even consider splitting them instead so that you can have two commanders with support tree as the primary rather than hiding one behind the other. Boudica is another solid epic that doesn't really care about the type of troop that you bring. She does have a lot of utility. She does some healing, rage reduction, rage generation, a lot of things that I really like. I also really like Bybars. Bybars does huge amounts of area of effect damage and he reduces the march speed of the target, which is super relevant for increasing the damage that Ethelflaed deals. I actually like that combo a whole heck of a lot. I also really like the combo with Osman for doing lots of damage. This would be a backline combo in Canyon, and I'd probably prefer the Kusunoki, uh, or even heck, if you had a, you know, expertise Kira, which, spoiler alert, nobody really does yet. Uh, you could use Kira as the secondary as well and get lots of Nice area of effect damage going. All in all, 
a lot of really flexible pairings for Canyon, but if I point to some of the very best pairings in Canyon in the kingdom that I'm in, and man, we've got some top tier Canyon teams here, we see that Ethelflaed Esong is here, it's there again, it's there again, it's there again, it is Ethelflaed Mehmed, another solid pair at the Legendary for this game mode. I actually forgot to mention it, but that's a really sick pair. And you can see in this case, Negan has split out the Esong to pair with his Ramses. Continuing, we see Ethelflaed Esong. We see in the next row, Ethelflaed Constantine. Haha, -ha, that's a pair that I use. Good on you, Fizrook. Here's another Ethelflaed Constantine with a commander missing. Does Jen know he's missing a commander? Jen, buddy, do you, do you know? All right, going on. Juggernaut using the Ethelflaed Constantine. Air Seos using the Ethelflaed Esong. So you see what people are doing here. These are the top 10 teams in our canyon, and I bet you these are going to be among the top 10 the second we get into KVK as well. Now, if we go back to the Ethelflaed and just get a look at pairings for the open field, this is where things get a little wacky, because if you're in your first season of KVK, yeah, like, use the Ethel Flood primary, you're going to run around the field, you're going to use Hasty Departure to move around and navigate. You'll be a little low on march speed otherwise, but Hasty Departure will get you where you need to go. The problem is that when you get later and later into KVKs, you're going to get focused out, and you can't have a commander like Joan of Arc or Ethel Flood as a primary because it is painting that giant Waldo target all over <laughs> your Ethel Flood to get killed. So my recommendation instead would be to hide her behind other powerful commanders. So some examples of ways that I've seen this done include hiding the Ethelflaed behind a Richard I or a Charles Martel. Sounds a little wacky at first, but yeah, that'll do some work. Saladin is another solid choice to use as a primary with Ethelflaed as the secondary Heck, I've even seen Alexander the Great primary with Ethelflaed secondary. And, you know, look, you're going to lose out on 20% damage because you're not going to bring mixed troops. You're not bringing mixed troops to Alexander the Great's march. You're not, you're not doing it. You want the march speed, okay? You're probably not doing that with Saladin because you want all the cavalry march speed. You're not doing that with the infantry of Richard and Charles. You're using them as a secondary in order to hide that massive amount of area of effect damage. Because look, the reality is, in a big freaking brawl, people aren't going to target your Richard. They're not going to do it. And if they're not targeting your Richard, then you're going to have huge amounts of area of effect damage get through. Now, I'm going to make the argument that maybe Richard's not the best example of that in 2020, because there's a lot of counters to Richard. Card up in the top if you want to see my evaluation of Richard the First. Maybe these days Charles Martel is a better pick for this sort of operation. He's got less sustain than Richard I, but you can't completely shut down his shield like you can cut down the Richard I heal with commanders like Ramses, Alexander the Great, and Saladin. Another fine commander to bring for Ethelflaed as a pairing in the open field would be a Constantine primary, Ethelflaed secondary. Support tree is going to rapid fire out that active skill. And although Constantine doesn't have March Speed Reduction, you could go in and get the talents that give the March Speed Reduction, so you get a little bit of that benefit when you're using your Ethelflaed, and hopefully other people are debuffing March Speed anyways when you're fighting in the open field. Now, you might be tempted to use Ethelflaed in your garrison for your city. You probably should not be doing that. That seems unlikely to be a great recommendation. And if you are fighting in the open field with an epic commander and you wanted to hide your Ethelflaed, a couple options here. One would be to use Sun Tzu primary with Ethelflaed secondary. People might focus down your Sun Tzu, but it at least gives you a little bit of protection. And there's a bunch of March Speed in the infantry talent tree that you can go and get. I also kind of like using the Hermit. Herman generates rage, you'll fire out the active skill more, you bring full archers. The problem with Herman in the open field is that, like, yeah, you are kind of countered by a lot of cavalry that are going to be running all over the place. Speaking of cavalry, you could pair with a commander like Bybars to get a little bit of march speed when you leave combat, as well as some healing. I think that's a decent pair in the open field, but... But you've got to get out of combat in order to get the march speed bonus. And if you don't get out of combat, your, mar your march might just get shredded and focused down before you've had the opportunity to get this bonus right over here. 
You also may notice that absent from my recommendations is the Joan of Arc pairing, which is a little weird to say. You can use Joan of Arc and Ethelflaed together and be the ultimate buffer and debuffer. That is true. However, you are painting the biggest target on your back I have ever seen. Using the Ethelflaed as the primary is certainly better than the Joan of Arc as the primary. People will really target down the Joan, and the leadership tree is better than the integration tree, which is what you've got on Joan of Arc. However, I would just warn you like, to be cautious with some of these pairs, because if you get caught in an open field fight, Ethelflaed doesn't have a lot of escape tactics, and she will most certainly get melted down. I'd be eager to hear if there's any other pairings that I missed. Let me know down below in the comments or if there's some build advice that you have that I didn't mention here. All in all, I think she's a solid commander in 2020 and her presence in Canyon is simply undeniable. People will likely be using her for a very long time to come and I do hope that at some point they put a new commander into the metal store because Lord knows I've got over 2 million medals, but we'll see if that happens eventually. Consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and do me a favor and throw a like on the video if you enjoyed this or found this helpful at all. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.